Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Ankita. Welcome back to my channel. It's been three months since I made this unboxing video of the Beirut rose I bought from David Austin. Even though I've only had this rose since about April or so, I have to say I'm absolutely pleased with it. This is a climbing rose called James Galway, named after the famous British florist. It has large pink blooms with deeper pink centers. Unlike other climbing roses, this one has a very few thorns, which I consider to be a key benefit. It has a strong upright growth, light green foliage, and it's mostly suitable for walls, fences, arches, obelisks, trellis, pergolas, and containers. The average height it can reach is 12 feet and is suitable for zones 4 through 11. I ordered a bare root version of this rose directly from David Austin Nurseries. In the US, one of their nurseries is located in Tyler, Texas, and the rose arrived in perfect condition. They do provide a 5-year guarantee, which is a good thing. If any rose is damaged or if they fail to grow, they'll replace them free of charge. All of their roses are bred in Shropshire, England, and then grown in the USA. Bare root roses are young rose plants that are sold without soil or containers. They are harvested during the dormant season, typically from late autumn to early spring when the rose plants have shed their leaves and are in a state of rest. Soaking bare root roses in water before planting is a common practice to help rehydrate the roots and prepare them for planting. After carefully removing the packaging, choose a container large enough to accommodate the roots of the bare root rose. A bucket or a deep container will work well for this purpose. Fill the container with enough water to fully submerge the roots of the rose plant. The water should cover the entire root system. Gently place the bare root rose into the container of water, ensuring the water roots are fully submerged. Allow the plant to soak for several hours, typically 6 to 12 hours, but I left it in the pot to soak overnight. Next, for prepping the pot, I'm drilling holes in the pot before planting, since this is an essential step in container gardening. Proper drainage is crucial for the health and success of plants in pots because it allows excess water to escape and prevents waterlogged soil, which can lead to root rot and other issues. So choose a pot that is suitable for the size and type of the plant you want to grow. I have used, I think, 15 inch pot. Ensure the pot has enough space for the roots to grow and it is made of durable materials such as ceramic, clay, plastic, or terracotta. I think I got this pot from Home Depot. It's quite sturdy. Turn the pot upside down and mark the locations where you want to drill the holes. Drill enough holes to ensure proper drainage. The number of holes needed may vary depending on the pot size, but having at least 4-6 to six holes is generally recommended for small to medium sized pots. Next, for preparing the soil, I have here Miracle Grow Potting Mix, Earthworm Castings, Biotone Starter, which is specifically formulated to promote healthy root growth, Cedar Grove Compost, and Perlite to help improve the overall structure of the soil. Time to check on the soaked bare root plant. During the soaking period, you may notice the roots absorbing water and becoming plump and hydrated. This is a positive sign that the plant is rehydrating. Carefully remove the rose from water and gently shake off any excess water. A general guideline for a well-balanced soil mix using potting mix, perlite, earthworm castings and biotone starter would be uh, about 50-60% to 60 of potting mix, 20-30% to 30 of perlite, earthworm castings 10-20% to 20 and biotone starter about 5-10%. to 10 Potting mix provides a well-balanced base while perlite improves drainage and aeration. Earthworm castings contribute essential nutrients and microbial activity and the mycorrhizal fungi in the biotone starter enhance root health and nutrient uptake. Potting mix is a soilless blend specifically designed for container gardening. It usually contains a mix of peat moss, vermiculite, and composted materials. Uh, it also provides good drainage, aeration, and moisture retention, promoting healthy root growth. Perlite, on the other hand, is a lightweight, porous volcanic glass used to improve soil drainage and aeration. It prevents the soil from becoming compacted and allows uh, roots to access oxygen more easily. Earthworm castings, also known as worm compost or wormy compost, are the rich organic matter left behind by earthworms after digesting organic material. They are an excellent source of nutrients, uh, improve soil structure, 
and enhance microbial activity in the soil, promoting the growth and health. Biotone starter is a mycorrhizal inoculant, a type of beneficial fungi that forms a symbiotic relationship with plant roots. Mycorrhizal fungi enhances nutrient uptake, improves soil structure, and increases plant resistance to stress. Keep in mind that these percentages are general guidelines and you can adjust them based on the specific requirements of your plant's container size and environmental conditions. Some plants may prefer a slightly higher or lower percentage of certain components. Before planting, thoroughly mix the components to ensure an even distribution throughout the soil mix. When using the soil mix for container gardening, it's essential to monitor your plant's growth and water needs and make adjustments as necessary. Remember that different plants have different preferences, so you might need to fine-tune the blend ratio for specific varieties. Select a sunny spot in your garden that receives at least 6 to 8 hours of direct sunlight each day. Roses prefer full sun for optimal growth and flowering. But this particular rose that I bought is also suitable for partial sunlight and all types of soil. Dig a hole that is at least twice as wide and deep as the rose's root ball. The depth should be sufficient to accommodate the roots without bending or crowding them. If you have a biotone starter or a similar planting aid, you can add it to the planting hole according to the package instructions to promote root development and reduce transplant shock. But I suggest you get a biotone starter. Trust me when I say this, it makes a huge difference in the development of the plant roots as well as the plant. I use it while planting almost all of my plants. Carefully spread out the roots, place the roots in the center of the hole and backfill with the amended soil. Position the plant so that the graft union, which is the swollen area where the rootstock and rose variety meet, is slightly above the soil level. As you fill the hole with soil, gently tamp it down as you go to eliminate air pockets. Avoid compacting the soil too tightly around the roots. Water the newly planted rose thoroughly to settle the soil around the roots. I made sure that I watered regularly, keeping the soil consistently moist, especially during the first few weeks as the plant establishes. You can also apply a layer of mulch around the base of the rose plant. This helps retain moisture, um, it can help suppress weeds and regulate soil temperature. Leave a small gap around the stem to prevent rot. If you are planting a dormant bare root rose, prune back the canes uh, to provide new growth. Mine already had so many new growth. As you can see, the young shoots popping out all over the plant. I didn't feel like this needed pruning, so I skipped this part. This was after 10 days. You can see the leaves are starting to unfurl and expand. Day 15. More leaves. Day 25. Day 32. Here I started noticing sawfly larvae under the leaves, trying to consume the leaf tissue between the veins, leaving the skeletonized appearance. Larvae infections can defoliate the plant, leading to weakened growth and diminishing flowers, but nothing a good old neem oil and water couldn't fix. I just sprayed them on the leaves where the larvae were attached. You can also wipe them down with a damp cloth if the plant is small and manageable. On day 40, I started noticing flower buds developing on the plant. It was on day 55 that I started noticing the buds breaking. This was the most thrilling stage to witness as the rose began to unfurl and show glimpses of its bloom. This was when it started revealing the vibrant colors and exquisite shape of the rose flower. Day 60 Day 63 Day 65 This was the peak of it, day 70. Enjoy the photos. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.